For the last three years, the roads and parking lots of this famed fairgrounds in horse-oriented Del Mar, California, have hosted a showdown among the world's most exotic racing cars. In each of those years, one man, one car, one team emerged as champion. The 1990 International Motorsports Association season offered Jeff Brabham a chance to make history, to match the record of the late Peter Gregg as the only man to win the series championship three years in a row. To do it, Brabham and his racing team would have to survive the most competitive season in series history. For two years, this championship, matching the fastest and most complex cars in the world, had been dominated by two names, Jeff Brabham and Nissan, winners of both driver and manufacturer crowns. In 1990, they faced the challenge of defending those titles and writing a new page in the record book. Join me now as we follow Brabham and team through the 1990 season and hear from the men, those behind the wheel and those behind the scenes. victories, the Nissan team arrived in Daytona with a pair of cars seeking its first victory in the world-renowned Sunbank 24 hours. Victory went to Britain's Jaguar, a 1-2 sweep that gave the team an early lead in the 1990 title chase. 28 points each for Jaguar drivers Davy Jones, Jan Lammers, and Andy Wallace. Zero points for Brabham and teammate Chip Robinson. From the high banks of Daytona, the teams moved to the streets of Miami, Florida, a circuit which has played a major role in their success over the years. In 1987, Miami was the scene of the team's first victory in the hands of Brabham and Elliott Forbes Robinson. At that moment, the team moved from the ranks of contenders into the limelight reserved for winners. In 1989, Brabham won again this time partnering with Chip Robinson, igniting a streak of 10 victories in the next 15 races. In 1990, Robinson lay third when Bob Wallach's Porsche crashed into the Drake Olsen Toyota in a battle for the lead. Brabham and Robinson cruised home to their third victory in four races in Miami. That triumph moved them out of the points table for the first time. Hey, Jeff, Jeff. No racing series demands more of its cars and drivers the Nemsa's jump from a two-hour sprint on the Miami streets to the half-day grind that is the 12 hours of Sebring. Developing a team to succeed at both takes a strong leader. In the case of this crew, that man is Kaz Caster. He brought more than two decades of experience in race management to Nissan's program in the mid-1980s and shaped it into a juggernaut. I've been going to Sebring for a long, long time, and uh, my first time there with a team was with a factory team for Triumph in 1963, and uh, it, it was just, I, you know, just pinched myself to say, geez, you know, here we are just a little while later, and, and you've got cars that are running 1-2 in this event, mm -hmm. and it's, uh, it, it, was a, it was a good feeling for me, a great feeling. It's great. I mean, you know, you go to the racetrack. He, he wants to win so badly, and, and the whole team is motivated that way. You know, it comes from the top, and, and if management has that attitude, you know, it just filters down through every, throughout the whole team, and really makes a big difference. There's an awful lot of people that are responsible for what we do, you know, and, uh, and there's a few people like Don and myself and, and Trevor, and the drivers get, get the credit for it, and it's more of a team sport than anybody has even most remote awareness of. In 1989, leading Nissan's first assault on the rough runways of the old military base at Sebring, the team of Jeff Brabham, Chip Robinson, and IndyCar driver Ari Landak swept to victory, the first for a Japanese nameplate in a major endurance race. In 1990, at Sebring, Robinson put the car he shared with Brabham on the pole, then fell back. Bob Earl and Derek Daly led the final 50 laps on their way to a second straight victory. 
but it was Brabham who stole the show in the darkness of the race's closing minutes, running down the Jaguar of Daytona winner Jan Lammers for second place. It's fun to watch him. 30 minutes to go and 40 seconds down uh, and, and makes it. You know, he was turning faster laps at night than everyone else had turned in the day. I think he turned the fastest lap in the race, in fact, in that last 30 minutes. Passing the Jaguar boosted Brabham and Robinson into second place in the championship standings after Sebring. Just five points behind the leaders from Jaguar as the series headed for the hills of Georgia.